Rivers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Did you have a good 4th of July? I did. Yeah. It was, It was. well, I mean, I worked, but it was good. Yeah. 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 I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything special or exciting. It did yeah. pour down rain here. Oh, dude. pretty much the whole day on the Fourth of July. But my yeah. my brother and his family got into town that day too, so oh, we had a man. nice time. Y'all shoot any fireworks? No. Oh. no. Um, there were sparklers at some point. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was there for the. Sparklers. He's got a, he's got a three year old and an infant. So <laughs> yeah, you know. oh, never stopped us from shooting off some fireworks. No. But. I know. <laughs> Just that's when it's fun when they're little because then you're you're like in charge of putting on the show yeah. <laughs> as the adult. When they get older, they want to participate in putting on the show. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember you used to set off some commercial grade fireworks. Uh, you know, I have <laughs> I've set off some commercial grade fireworks myself. Yes. I will not lie. <laughs> no, it was good, good times. Yeah. Uh, we used to be able to see the um, the local fireworks display from Mom's house. Oh yeah. I don't know if they just didn't do it because of the rain or. They if may they've not moved have. it or I don't they know. Did the we one didn't in, see it though. They did the one in Robertsdale um, because it's like right. At, we can walk there, mm-hmm. like, and we usually do. That's you. Usually, we we shoot some ourselves, and then we'll go watch them, and then we'll finish shooting off ours when we get back. Yeah. So. Um. Well, so sorry we missed last week, everyone. Uh, as I said, family in town, and it just it was never never really had really a good convenient opportunity. Yeah, not and still like get the time you know, yeah. that we, uh, that we wanted with, uh, with Danny's family and, yeah. um, everybody else that came and visited while he was in town. Yeah. I mean, it's always good. We probably could have done a big powwow like one night or something. And <laughs> yeah, in that would be fun. Whatever. We ought to do that next time everybody comes in town. Yeah. We got the, the mics quality to do would, it. Uh, the sound quality would be terrible though. Still, um, yeah. would, like we don't have enough mics to make it yeah. good. That's true. You know, it would be, um, we'd have to turn up the gain and, and it would be distant. It would sound kind of hollow, but I yeah. mean, we could do it. Probably the content would still be good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That'd be some fun conversations. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, you want to get into, into this tonight? Yeah. What well, we want to talk about. Oh, I did get a comment actually, um, from one of the guys, I think about, uh, how we didn't talk about what we were drinking anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, well, uh, we're Mostly not drinking anymore. <laughs> yeah, not it's not not every night. Some nights I'll grab a drink, but like I didn't tonight. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, yeah. Um, I I guess it's probably a good thing that this wasn't a uh, uh, podcast about small batch whiskey then, because it <laughs> would be dead by it, now. It would be over. <laughs> yeah. I still have a lot of whiskey. Yeah, and I, <laughs> a I still, nice variety. I still collect. Yeah. But, um, not as avidly as I once did. Yeah. And you know. I'm trying to drink less and not be so settled into my uh, mediocre career in mild alcoholism. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine once said. Um, all right. Well, so I, I guess the the interesting thing in the news right now is the um, all the talk about us leaving Afghanistan. Yeah. Or um, all the I would say opposition pro- to us well, leaving Afghanistan. I was going to say propaganda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> It's, 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 they're laying it on thick, man. Yeah. Like, and, and you knew that this would happen. Like you, there's any time, I mean, we're ending a major war and there are plenty of people out there and plenty of special interests Mm -hmm. that are content with us staying there. Oh yeah. And that, that are, that are wanting that. Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing that on full display right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that there's another side to it too, um, where like, okay, so the U S military, uh, per se is mm-hmm. leaving. Yeah. Sort of. Um, I mean, they're, they, you know, this, there's still the thing about, oh, well, we're going to leave, you know, however many 650 troops to cover the airport and the embassy or whatever. Now, yeah. I don't remember that being part of the deal, so I'm not <laughs> sure how, how that's going to go. But um, I think that they're, well, certainly the U.S. mercenary force is going to remain. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so... Like I think that a lot of people are actually kind of getting their way um, yeah. in that now this is going to become a privatized war. Yeah. Um, now, on the other hand, the the private firms don't have the kind of money to spend that the U.S. government does. So, uh, you know, Northrop Grumman and um, and Boeing and uh, General Dynamics and the airplane one that I can't ever think of the name of. Um, 
it yeah i don't know it it's a you it's listed the, all the ones that are like on my head right now it, yeah it's 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 a really big one but i I can't ever remember the name of it. It doesn't matter. Um, and which is funny cause I refer to it all the time. Cause whenever I think of it, I'm like, Oh yeah, I got to talk about them cause I remember <laughs> the name suddenly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're going to be, um, a little bit more upset about this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, because you know, uh, they, those big government contracts sustain those businesses. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I tell you though, I mean, it, uh, sorry, I, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you, no, good. but on the other hand, um, they, I think that those, uh, interests are just lobbying towards the near peer, uh, war, you know, pushing for, um, conflict with China and or Russia, yeah, um, the larger, yeah, because yeah. those, you know, the, this little kind of, um, fighting hillmen, uh, <laughs> in the backwoods of Afghanistan, all of Afghanistan pretty much is the backwoods, but, yeah. um, sorry, Afghanistan, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, you know, that just doesn't uh, bring up the, the big ticket items that like, I mean, think about, um, North of Grumman, a shipbuilder and a yeah. war with China. Oh, like yeah. that's a huge money maker for somebody like and that. And I get the idea that there's not a lot of ships involved if, with fighting Afghanistan. Since they're landlocked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm assuming like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, mean, I think you're probably right. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, of course, you know, uh, like a ground war in Russia or China. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, you know, that's a lot of big equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's certainly interest in shifting our focus. Yeah. Um, I kind of wonder what Biden's real reasoning, because he came out pretty hard the other day. I don't know. We I know we got some clips later. Mm-hmm. I don't know that there are Biden actually now. I don't remember. No, no it's not. But um, so, yeah, so Biden, all the more reason for me to mention it then, mm-hmm. that Biden came out and he, he sounded really good in his defense of, you know, pulling out mm-hmm. because he talked about, you know, it's up to the Afghan people to decide what kind of government they want and things of that nature. Yeah. And it, it just, anytime I hear, especially a politician I don't care for, like saying the things I would like them to say, mm-hmm. I'm always questioning it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's, I, I certainly think it's noteworthy. I heard that's that stuff too. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you know, we may as well talk about this after we go over the Afghan stuff. Um, he also had some really interesting remarks about his executive order to try and promote competition in business in the U S. Oh, really? I didn't hear that. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't hear it. I, I read them, Oh yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah, I get too distracted by the way he says things when he talks. I, like it yeah. doesn't it doesn't stick. So I I tend to read his comments. But yeah, um, yeah. anyway, uh, but it was the same kind of thing where he was saying a lot of the right things about how capitalism works and and so forth. Yeah. Um. And uh. You know, more on that later, I guess. And in fact, we may as well um just go ahead and play the clip from Brooks. Yeah. Uh. uh of formerly Brooks and Shields, now Brooks and whoever's filling in this week. Yeah. Um, but uh, he he hits a lot of the the big points that people are making about us leaving Afghanistan. So, you yeah. know, we may as well play that here. Yeah, have a little discussion. I think he's making a mistake. You know, um, and it's 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 become obvious in record time that it's a mistake. When he announced the policy initially, he said he had faith in the Afghan government to hold Afghanistan together from the Taliban. That has fallen apart. We reported earlier on the show, 85% of the territory has already fallen to the Taliban. The Taliban seems completely confident they will take over. And, you know, we, we all, I think it was 2014 or so, when this Pakistani young lady, Malala, won the Nobel Prize, and who was shot in the head by the Taliban for going to school. There are a lot of Afghan Malalas out there. And we were all moved by her. And we all sympathized and thought that was a very important cause that young women in this part of the world should be able to get an education. And we're walking away from that. We're walking away from the idea that Afghanistan will stay one country. We could be walking away from the idea that we can keep al-Qaeda out of Afghanistan again. So they could set up a terror spot. You could just get incredible turmoil in that part of the world, refugees flooding into Pakistan, destabilizing Pakistan. So to me, what we were doing over the last year which was like 2,500 troops, relatively low casualties, was a price worth paying for humanitarian and strategic reasons. And I think it's a mistake that that we're pulling out. Okay. So the first thing he says, um, 
after this is a mistake, uh, <laughs> is that, uh, you know, the Taliban will take over the country immediately, et cetera. And I heard somebody else commenting recently, like, um, well, as soon as the U S troops leave, there will be a civil war in the country. Well, and I was like, what do you think the last 20 years have been? Yeah. Like it hasn't been peace there. Na- There's not <laughs> peace there now. Yeah. Like, Just because I mean, we were involved doesn't make it not a civil war. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, and at least at the end of when they have their civil war, like it'll be done. Like it, the, with with the situation as it is now, unless we're just going to stay there forever, then there's just going to be war there forever. Yeah. Like well, I there mean, probably that's, that's will your, be war there forever. Well, and there may be, um, but it'll be a much smaller conflict than what's going on right now with the well, U.S. And, troop involvement. And it and, will settle in at some point to just like minor conflict. Yeah. Or, yeah. There'll be skirmishes between tribal boundaries. That's. Yeah. The way that's it has pretty historically well, been. I was going to say, I mean, that's pretty well the way this country operates, right? Yeah. The, I mean, Afghanistan has never... Actually, this is something that Biden also said, I'm pretty sure, yeah. is that Afghanistan has never been a unified country. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, he did say that. He said that it was a very... He, I think he used the word tribal. Mm-hmm. That it's a very, always been a very tribal country. Yeah. And that, I mean, the lines that... Uh, the, you know, the national boundaries of Afghanistan were drawn by somebody else. Yeah. Um, without any regard to you know, who lived where yeah. um, and who controlled what territory. Uh, it's always been tribal. Um, now, I did, I, I would like to point out that, you know, we're really concerned about the Taliban taking over the country, but in the 80s, we were encouraging the Taliban to take over the country. Right. Um, <laughs> but, it, you know, the the whole idea that like, oh, now that we leave, it'll be a civil war. No, it's been a civil war the whole time. Exactly. Uh, we've just been fighting on one side of it. We've been yeah. trying to fight on the side of the Kabul government. But really, throughout this entire thing, the the power of the Kabul government has reached barely past the city limits of Kabul. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and so, you know, the other thing is, well, if if the only thing that's keeping the nas- the quote-unquote national government from falling is U.S. troop involvement, then... You know, there's no, I mean, like, That's, exactly. It, it'll like, never be, be yeah, well, it'll never be sustainable. Yeah. Like, I mean, if we hadn't, if they, if we hadn't been able to establish a sustainable government in 20 years of being there, mm-hmm. like it's, we'll be there forever. Um, and that, that's not that's not the right answer. That's not the the way we want to go. Yeah, that doesn't do anybody any good. Yeah. And and speaking of not doing anybody any good, like I get so tired of the humanitarian argument. Yeah, um, that that drives me crazy. Oh well, we have to be there because you know uh, in I- Iraq, I guess is what he was saying. Um, you know, some girl was shot in the head by the Taliban for going to school or whatever. Yeah. All right. First off, also different Taliban, but yeah. um, the. Like, that's not why we were never there for well, that reason. And that goes to a point. Um, so just today, Bush came out, W. Bush came out and, and made some comments. He was it was in an interview he did with, I think, DW News. Um, and he made some comments about what was going on and us pulling out of Afghanistan. And um, I don't really know what I expected him to say in regards to that. Mm -hmm. But I was shocked with what he did say because it was basically the same thing that we just heard in that clip. It was Mm -hmm. the humanitarian argument. It was, you know, the um, little girls aren't going to be able to go to school and the whole thing. And the reason it irritated me is because I remember going into Afghanistan. I remember Mm -hmm. him taking us into Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. That was never the reasoning. The reasoning, and we were never there to nation build. We were there to get the terrorists. Like, that's Mm -hmm. what... That was the that was the pitch, yeah. You know, and to come out twenty years later and and to make that argument, and the guy that sent us in there to make mm-hmm. that argument just really stunk to me. Yeah. Well, and there's bad people on all sides of this anyway. Yeah. Um, there have been so many reports um, of the uh, the Afghan government, the central government of Afghanistan that we're supporting, and the leadership in that Af- that government. Like um, raping young kids and so forth too. Oh yeah. So it's not like it's not like um, it would be a, a, a it's a, not a, a progressive democratic government that we left behind. Even if we had succeeded, any like yeah. it it would still be a you know brutal, ruthless, you know yeah. archaic yeah. government that does a lot of things that we would still consider humanitarian issues. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, what's the answer then? We just go right back in to fight on the other side. We weren't willing to do that in Iraq, so I don't think that we'll be willing <laughs> to do that in Afghanistan. Yeah. And 
the thing that seems most obvious to me though, like even if you, even if you don't know about what's going on on the other side, yeah. um, how much schooling and so forth do you think is going on with U S drones dropping bombs all over the country? Yeah. I mean, do you think that, do you think that it's a good thing that we're dropping those bombs everywhere so that people can go to school? I mean, I don't think that that's how it works really. Yeah. And how many of them bombs have hit schools? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's a good question too. And how many little girls have been killed by the bombs? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, and they don't have good civilian casualty counts um, mm-hmm. because the U.S. military is the only one that really produces any, and they mm-hmm. stopped uh, reporting them long ago. And mm-hmm. even when they did report them, um, pretty much anybody that was over 12 and under 80 was considered an enemy combatant. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like we talked about how they did it in Vietnam, and it wasn't much different. I mean, this is a long... This is a podcast from way back that we talked about that, but... yeah. Essentially, they said in Vietnam that anybody that was in an area where U.S. Army was fighting was considered was an combatant. enemy combatant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they had they didn't change that very much for Afghanistan. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a little bit stricter rules, but essentially, anybody that is close to adulthood is considered a combatant. Yeah, and and in their defense, with that. Like there are situations where that, I mean, they send kids up with bombs and and old people up with bombs. I mean, that, that stuff happens. Like um, it happens regularly Mm -hmm. in a, in a, in a country we shouldn't be in. Yeah. That's always what I go back to because I've, I've, you know, the argument, the other side of that argument would be, you know, well, yeah, Yeah. but the reason those they're considered combatants is because a lot of times they are. Yeah. And that's fair. I mean, I'll give you that, but at the same time, I go back to the we shouldn't be there in the first place. Well, like, I don't we're think we're the a bad lot of, guys here. Yeah, I don't think a lot of times they are either. I mean, this well, is. A, I'm sure there's plenty of times when they aren't, but there's. This there is a are mostly times. pastoral country, I, I think, yeah. still at this point. Um, and uh, so anybody with a rifle is yeah. not a combatant. Yeah. I mean. Oh yeah. Shouldn't be, but at the same time, I mean, it's just like here in the U.S. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, you get you're in a traffic stop and you got a gun, you, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, but like, okay, so if they dropped a bomb on my neighborhood here yeah. and they went through and all these houses and they just identified anybody that had a gun as an enemy combatant, yeah, I mean, that's going to be most of the block. That's going to be most of the block, and we yeah. weren't combating. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, we might have been if we'd known they were going to drop a bomb, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but you know, we yeah. we weren't beforehand, probably. Yeah. Um, some of it's us true. are putting it out on the airwaves, but <laughs> right. <you know. laughs> so, but it's an undisclosed location, so yeah. So they all know where to <laughs> drop the bomb, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then of course there's the the tired, tired old excuse like if we aren't there, then Al Qaeda will move in. Um, when yeah. the truth is that wherever we are where we destabilize the governments that's where the terrorists yeah and that's go. the lesson i've really learned from cuz when we went into afghanistan i was all for it and i was mm-hmm. like we got to we they hit us we got to hit them blah yeah. blah 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 and of course i believed a lot of the propaganda and didn't understand this stuff as much but now that's something i understand more is that you know the whole reason we were hit on 911 was because of blowback yeah and because we'd been dropping bombs in iraq for 10 e- years exactly exactly mm-hmm. and so that's kind of where you have to that the the way to fix this problem is to quit dropping the bombs yeah like i mean that's i mean it, it, we fix this mm-hmm. terrorist problem pretty quick if we start bringing our boys home mm-hmm. and and quit dropping the bombs yeah yeah, absolutely. Nobody wants to be ruled particularly by outsiders. Absolutely. Well, I say nobody wants to be ruled. I think that there are plenty of people that like to be ruled, but mm-hmm. but nobody wants to be dominated yeah. particularly by outsiders. By that's an probably outside a better force. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. probably a better way to put that. Um and you know, if you go back like read Scott Horton's first book, uh Fool's Errand. Yeah. Um the Taliban didn't want Al Qaeda there in the first place. Yeah. It, right. it wasn't Al Qaeda wasn't wasn't there a because, friendly relationship. Yeah, Al Qaeda <laughs> wasn't there because the Taliban wanted them there. Yeah. Um. And in fact, the Taliban tried to give up Osama bin Laden many times, but you know Bush wouldn't hear it. He was like, "Screw it, I'm going in. We're dropping bombs." Yeah. yeah. Um. Because that he, just seems tougher, I guess. Well, I mean, that's what he needed to do. He needed to come out as the big man dropping mm-hmm. the bombs. You yeah. Know? Because there was a lot of anger, and like I say, I rem- I remember that time pretty well. Like I was one of them. Like I was all, yeah, I was angry. Like that was, <laughs> yeah. I um, 
I don't remember being angry so much. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember wanting to go into war. I remember yeah. wanting to go up to New York and help out. Yeah. Like, I remember that. Yeah. Um, but I don't really remember wanting to go to war. I was also far more disconnected then than I, yeah. I am now. And I, I probably watched about as much mainstream news then as I do now. Yeah. Maybe less even somehow. Yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe I just wasn't propagandized in the same way. Uh, no, um, it was it was thick and I bought into it. Like I say, and I bought up into it right until we, when, when it became... Ne- Iraq was next. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's where I started pumping the brakes yeah. and started doing some of my own research. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> like, this, this is goods are not as advertised here. <laughs> well, and speaking of research, the, the more I've read about um, the history of the, the chasing after bin Laden, yeah. um, the more I believe that he was intentionally allowed to escape into Pakistan. Yeah. Um, because if you catch him, it's kind of the end. Right, like that, you know. Oh yeah, it would have put a, a hiatus on things way early. Mm-hmm. Could and have. they want that. Yeah. So here oh, we absolutely. are, twenty years later. Yeah. And we have, at least yeah. reportedly, killed Osama <laughs> bin Laden at yeah. this point. I don't actually doubt that personally, but, yeah. um, you know, uh, we're still at war. Yeah. So it, it didn't put an end to things then. It was far enough later that people didn't care anymore. Yeah. Well, that was, we were already far enough down the rabbit hole then. But if we had caught. If we had gotten Bin Laden a year or so after going into Afghanistan, Mm -hmm. I think that people were still engaged enough in what was going on in Afghanistan to have been ready to call it then. Yeah. Well, um, to sum up, uh, Brooks said it's a mistake for strategic and humanitarian reasons to leave, and I think he's got it completely backwards. I think it's a mistake for strategic and humanitarian reasons to stay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, hey, I'll give credit to Biden. I mean, he got in that um, little interview or that I had listened to. I don't know if it was an interview. I think it was a um, press conference. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, he got it right. Yeah. Like, I mean, he made the proper arguments for getting out of there. Yeah. And for um, self-determination. Yeah. That, that's the main point, right? Yeah. Like from our perspective. Oh, absolutely. Let people choose. These people choose for themselves what kind of government they want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, I, I agree. And then uh, then on the economic f- side, um, he signed this uh, executive order to try and promote competition. And he was saying a lot of the same things then, too. Yeah. Um, you know, capitalism without competition isn't capitalism, it's exploitation. Okay, there's some truth to that. Yeah. Um, the That, uh, you know, the core of uh, market capitalism is competition. Yeah. Um, you know, that we need to... Uh, you know, fend off monopolization. Well, I disagree with that, but um, I agree. But in, in a the th- true free market, you wouldn't need to fend off monopolism yeah. because it would uh, the market would do it for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, th- that's the real point. This is where he he misses it because he has faith in government to fix things. Yeah. Um, and he thinks that an, an another executive order, another executive fiat. Um, is going to fix capitalism, yeah. where the truth is that the way to fix capitalism in this country is to get the government out of it. Yeah. Um, now, he's saying, you know, we, we want to do things to promote small businesses, to make sure that businesses pay them, that, that labor isn't exploited, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and I would argue that a lot of these problems are caused by uh, interference by the government in the market. Um, that the, the only way that a monopoly that isn't providing the best service at the best price, um, the only way that a monopoly that isn't providing the best service at the best price can sustain itself is with government help. Yep. And you got a bunch of them out there. Yeah. And the biggest monopolies in this country are government agencies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the truth. (laughs) Um, and the most dangerous, uh, I would say as well. So, I, I mean, I think he's saying a lot of the right things about capitalism, and I appreciate that he's a person that at least believes that he is a, a pro-capitalist um, ex- executive. Yeah. Um, but I think that he's got completely the wrong answer by trying to get the government involved to pick winners and losers in a different way. Yeah. Um, the, the problem with capitalism in this country is that the government picks winners and losers and changing the way that the government picks winners and losers doesn't fix the problem. It just creates a new problem or a different problem. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Um, 
I mean, that's really all I have to say about that. I, yeah. I, I so started was, to dig into the pushing? executive order. So it was an uh, executive order. He's he's fixing the sign. Uh, he did sign actually. Oh, he did. Like the okay. remarks that I read were from the signing ceremony. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I started to look at. I, I didn't get to look at the um, the executive order itself until today, and it was really long, and it's all legalese, it's all legal, and yeah. so. You know, I wanted to read the intro, but I just didn't get the chance. I, um, I thought the intro would at least give me a good overview of what they were trying to do. But like, I mean, there is at least a couple of good things in there too. I mean, he's um, talking about uh, you know making it easier for people to import prescription drugs from Canada, as an example. Like one of the big things was, oh. well, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we got to get the cost of prescription drugs down. How do we do this? Well, we need to promote competition. How do we do this? Well, we let drugs, cheaper drugs come in from Canada. Um, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't remember it saying that they were going to let cheaper drugs come in from Mexico. Yeah, but, because them drugs are really cheap. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I mean, but again, it's, you know, well, we're going to work with the FDA to, you know, streamline the process for people to bring, I don't know. It just, yeah. Um, where, There's still so much bureaucracy involved. What's it really going to do? Yeah. I mean, and it may have an impact, but not as much of an impact as, as just he's like making it out to be. Yeah. Like um, eliminating the FDA and, uh, you know, eliminating border controls on trade. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, that would, <laughs> Why, that would make a big impact. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, but at least. Again, it's one of those things where at least he's like saying some of the right things. Yeah. Maybe get some of these young Democrats that have been brought up with this progressive idealism about, you know, socialism and um, and the evils of capitalism. Maybe get them at least to start thinking about it in a different way because it's kind of an ally of theirs that's talking about capitalism like it's a good thing. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> you know, so I, I think that there some good can come of this. Um I, I just, again, I think that, you know, it, it's one of those, uh, like sticking your thumb in the dike, right? Yeah. Like, you know, that old story about how the dikes were leaking in the Netherlands. And so people were trying to, you know, some guys trying to plug the hole with his finger, yeah. um, but then a new hole forms and you only have so many fingers. Anyway, <laughs> okay. yeah. like okay. putting a, a bandaid on it. What's the, what's the more American expression, putting a bandaid on a, on a gaping wound or whatever. I yeah. don't know. Anyway. Uh, there, there's a saying there, but I can't pull it. I ain't yeah, got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think that he has some of the right idea. It's like Trump. Trump did some of this too. Like he had some of the right ideas about how to free up the marketplace a little bit. He just didn't yeah. execute very well. Yeah. Or, you know, or he counteracted the things that he did well with things that he did badly. Like, okay, yeah. well, we're going to slash some regulation and make things easy, make it easier to start businesses and stuff like that. Yeah. And then we're going to start a trade war with, with China. China. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, you know, uh, they completely lose those gains yeah, we with We were kind of yeah. getting there, and then yeah. we weren't. <laughs> All of a sudden, now we're protectionist again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, but uh, he, you know, he also said something about, well, we've got to make sure that these these companies pay their employees better. Well, okay. So minimum wage laws is part of the reason that small business can't compete with large business. You can't, yeah. you can't improve the competitive advantage or re let's look at it from the other side. Um, you can't reduce the competitive advantage of big companies over small companies by introducing additional legislation. Yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> a big company is always going to be able to cope with additional bureaucracy better than a small company exactly exactly they have more money and more resources and and i've said it before on the podcast we're in for i mean small business is is hurting right now oh like yeah we're the last decade has been brutal to them mm -hmm. and, and the new one isn't off to a good start <laughs> yeah well it's because it's big business that's writing all this legislation it is yeah. like you know you go back to the um what was the free and open internet thing called that obama passed oh, right at the end the um Oh, I can't think of the name of it. Yeah. Well, at any rate, um, it was like Alphabet and and uh, so forth that wrote that legislation. It was the biggest tech companies that wrote that legislation. And why yeah. did they write that legislation? Yeah. Why did they promote that legislation? Because it was going to help them. <laughs> yeah, because it was going to raise the barrier to entry to any competition that they might have. Absolutely. Um, but they sold it as a way to just like to make everything, to bring 
Level playing field. Uh, yeah, level playing field. Equality to the, the internet. And yeah. stuff. No, that's not really what it was going to do. What it was going to do is it was going to place Solidify. a bunch of restrictions yeah. on um, on all businesses that the big businesses could cope with better and solidify their control. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And that's the way all of this works. Like, always be suspicious of legislation to promote small business or to promote, mm-hmm. you know, you know, uh, um, egalitarian use of whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it probably was written by people who, um, who are already in control of that area, that industry. And, and they just, keep it. yeah. And they just want to make it that much harder for somebody else to get in. Yep. Um, you want to spend a little time on the one six thing? Sure. All right. Well, so they, they arrested that guy, uh, somebody recently involved in the um, January 6th, quote unquote, conspiracy to over, overtake the government or whatever. Yeah. Um, the insurrection. The insurrection. <laughs> and uh, I mean, this whole thing, it, it just gets so absurd. Like there's so many contradictions within this, you know, so you have the, the prevailing narrative has been um, that, uh, you know, Trump brought these people together and then he incited them to insurrection there with his speech and got them to march down and try and launch an insurrection on the Capitol. Yeah. Um, but then you have like this guy that was arrested that, you know, the, the story was that he was, um, involved in the planning of the insurrection. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, either Trump incited it on, well, they were there yeah. or somebody else planned it before. Like you can't have both of those yeah, things at the same time. Both of those time. can't happen at the same time. <laughs> exactly. Right. Like only one of these can be true at once. Yep. <laughs> um, and then, you know, and it gets into such absurdity. So the guy uh, had pamphlets on how to build a, mil- a local militia. Yeah. Um, that he, uh, he was there at the Capitol with a knife and a tourniquet. And the, the thing that stood out to me on these reports that I can, I, I heard at least three different reports. That they really stressed that he had a knife and a tourniquet. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, like when I'm, when I was doing first responder stuff, things that I had with me all the time yeah. were a knife, a tourniquet and bandages. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So yeah. that doesn't sound like a guy that's there to inflict harm to and me. And for all you know, he may have had the bandages and they just didn't report it. Yeah, because they're not going to tell you because, that part. That really does sound like he's trying yeah, to do because, good. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, like. <laughs> and then, of course, the you know the big story was that he had the Lego uh, <laughs> yes, capital. This this was Lego guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> which I, I don't know how you don't just laugh at that anyway. Oh, um, man. like, okay, this, <laughs> I mean, the, this terrible, um, you know, militia man insurrectionist that was going to topple the government is a Lego enthusiast. Yeah. Uh, well, no, he I was, mean, he was doing his planning from the, le- from, yeah. from the Lego. <laughs> I mean, rotunda. He just, he just I, like, I, I kind of dig Legos too. I haven't in a long time, but you know, I think when it's I a cool a... idea. Like I liked Legos when I was a kid, but what the way I would label that person is nerd. Well, yeah, <laughs> especially considering he built the actual thing. Well, because my thing with Legos is I build like whatever I want. Well, like. that's true. <laughs> um, now, that's also, uh, as I understand it, actually a misconception in the story, because at least oh, the really? photos of them taking all this evidence out yeah. was included the unopened box. Oh, so we hadn't even like So he hadn't even put it. it together. But even if he had... Well, like the uh, idea that he planned an insurrection of the U S government using a Lego model of the Capitol <laughs> is just absurd. I picture this guy like standing over with like little Lego people. Like this is where we're going to enter at. <laughs> yeah. Besides, I imagine that you could find a lot of plans for the Capitol Dude, as you can public find records. Anything you want online, man. Like, I mean, if you really were serious about planning it, you wouldn't go to the Lego department. <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah, go to your local Toys R Us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Find the Lego Capitol. I mean, he had to search for it as I understand, as I understand it. Apparently it's out of print or something. Yeah. It's like they ended the series in 2019 or something. I don't know. Anyway, (laughs) like, I don't, it just, the absurdity is just insane. Yeah. I mean, to think that a few hundred unarmed people 
almost took over the U.S. Well, government. Well, and God, that the irritates that me when they when they tell it that way because, like, you watch the video and like you've got a bunch of old people like staying inside the barricades and mm-hmm. st- staying inside the ropes and whatnot. It's yeah, like they like they're yeah. they're just like on a tour. Like, yeah, most of them were tourists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there exactly. were some people that were causing trouble. In there, oh, obviously, without but, question, without question. But most of the people there were tourists. There wasn't yeah. any any threat of the U.S. government being toppled no no because remember if you're going to take on the u.s government you need you need f-16s F- and, and nukes and nukes right <laughs> right or f-15s i don't remember what she said but uh, no this the i tell regardless, you regardless you need fighter aircraft and nuclear <laughs> to, weapons to, to do it yeah i mean the whole idea that there was ever any threat to the u.s government is just absurd yeah um but it is it is scary though because they're pushing a narrative with this and mm-hmm. they're they're trying to use this to gain more control over over us. Yeah. Well, it's uh, they're they're pushing the domestic extremist label. Yes. yes. Um, domestic extremist is going to be the new terrorist label, yep. and it becomes an excuse for the government to use all its power against the people that they label as domestic extremists. Yeah. Well, and it's it's basically the way I look at it is they're moving the terror war inside our borders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. That's what's happening here. Yeah. Um, and we're watching it right before our eyes, and I'm telling you, it's it's a it's something to be uh, on the lookout for. Yeah. And here's something like so. I had this conversation um, with uh, some of the guys and their wives over at mom's house last week, yeah. and uh, we were talking about you know the surveillance state, and almost to actually, I think you might have been standing I was, there. I was at the in, time. I was involved in some of this conversation. Yeah, yeah. where um, we're saying, uh, well, you know, they're not concerned about the surveillance state because what is the the government doesn't have any interest in me anyway. Yeah. Um, so who cares if they keep all my data and so forth? I was like, well, they, you know, they don't have interest in you until they do. That's that's what, <laughs> exactly. And then they have all of this to choose from that they can, you know, cherry pick uh, things to make you look bad, yeah. or they can just insert it. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yep. It, like it doesn't matter if you actually did anything. It, whenever you get yeah. on somebody's radar for the wrong reason, yeah, it can be a problem. And beyond all that, um, I said that the the right to privacy is important for more than just like being used against you. Yeah, um, yeah. that people act differently when they know they're being watched, yeah. and that the idea that you're always being watched stifles creativity. It 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 pushes you to be one of the crowd. Yeah. Um, it, it, uh, reduces individuality. It like, it has severe negative social and progressive consequences in terms of, um, innovation and so forth. Because Mm -hmm. if you feel like you, you can't stand out in any way, then you just don't do all the things that you might've done that could have been great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, think about, um, just think about the phenomena of singing in the shower. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you're singing in the, sh- at least when I'm singing in the shower, I'm singing yeah. in the shower because I am alone in the shower. <laughs> like, right. Nobody wants to hear me sing. Yeah. I have a terrible singing. There's voice. no audience. Here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and would I do that in public? Hell no, I would not. Yeah. Or if you were being recorded or if I was being recorded. Absolutely yeah. not. Um, I mean, I, I might be being recorded, but the phone's in the other room. It's probably pretty you're probably muffled good, by the, yeah. uh, and, yeah. But that's exactly the point. Like, sure, you're not doing anything wrong, but you're also not doing anything different. You're not doing anything new. You're not doing anything potentially impactful. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think that that's underappreciated. I I would wholeheartedly agree. Just, and and that that whole, because I remember that conversation, it really kind of, there was a lot of things to bug me about that conversation because <laughs> we got into like tracking kids and stuff. Too. Oh yeah. Like um, when you're putting the, uh, the microchip in your children. Yeah. Mm. Like we got into a bunch of that stuff and, and mm. we have some very different opinions on that. Apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I, I have some, because I just, I, even with my kids, like, yeah, I, I'd like to know where they're at, but I want to know where they're at because they told me where they're at. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they lie to me, they can deal with the consequences when I catch them and yeah. I will catch you. Um, <laughs> but the whole idea of just tracking them everywhere they go, I, I can't, I don't like it. Like yeah. I, and, and yeah, there's risk to that, but there's mm-hmm. risk with everything. Yeah. Like, because that there's was... There's risks on the other side too. And that was another thing that I tried to point out that night is that you're creating a bunch of compliant, passive yeah, people. Absolutely. Well, and 
And I'm sorry, like I don't condone kids going out drinking and do, getting into trouble, but mm-hmm. you gotta have a little bit of that. Yeah, like that. Well, society... at some point, you have to separate yourself from your parents. Yeah, like you have to. Absolutely. Um, it's important to become your own person. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and it's important. To, look, okay, so you don't learn anything from succeeding. You yeah. really don't. Like yeah. you don't, you did something and it worked, so you're gonna keep doing that something. Okay, fine. But when you fail. Yeah. You learn things. Oh, absolutely. And you get better. Yeah. You come back stronger. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you have to make mistakes in your life. You have to be permitted to make mistakes in your life. Absolutely. And I I think some of the best parenting is done when you know your kid's about to do something stupid (laughs) and you you let it go. Yeah. Because they need to learn. Absolutely. No, I. It's when instead of grabbing your kid's hand before they touch the hot stove, they're not going to hurt themselves so bad. Yeah. Exactly. They'll pull their hand away and they will never do it again. Yeah. Uh, if you keep pulling their hand away from the stove, you're going to spend the rest of your life pulling their hand away At from the stove. At some point, it's going to be more than just a finger. It's going to be the whole hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's going to be, it's going to, yeah. or it's going to be the, you don't know. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, absolutely. No, I yes. wholeheartedly agree. You must learn fire is hot on your own. Yes. <laughs> um, and of course, the other side of the, the conspiracy stuff and the domestic extremism, and on that domestic extremist note, is that they're now promoting, like FBI is promoting, like report your friends, yeah. report your friends that you think might be a domestic extremist. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and this is, you know, like, they sent out is, a big Facebook message about that on Facebook. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and so, like the FBI apparently is now becoming like the NKVD. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which, for those who don't know, I was supposed to say clarify that because I'm <laughs> sure people the the NKVD was the Stalinist era Russian secret police, yeah. Soviet secret police, um, yeah. and they did the same kind of thing: report your neighbors, re- yeah. report your friends, like any, anything that you know, uh, anything really. I mean, it didn't matter because what it becomes when you have that kind of uh, Big Brother society is that you get in an argument with somebody or they're unhappy about your business and is encroaching on theirs or whatever, then you're suddenly a domestic extremist as far as they're concerned to report to the FBI. Yeah. Um, and have the FBI interfere with your life instead of them doing it. Um, or having to compete with you in a natural way in a market or whatever. I mean, like you get my point though. Oh, absolutely. Um, it becomes, it becomes the same thing that was going on in Afghanistan when they're like, well, you know, the U S military was out there saying you need to report people that are involved with Al Qaeda. And so what, what these tribal leaders would do is report other local tribal leaders. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And have anything to do with Al Qaeda, but it got rid of some competition. Exactly. It it fixed their problem. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Um, well, I don't know. You have anything more on that? I, I think no, this I is don't. more dangerous. I just hope people are aware that this is going on and recognize and understand history well enough to to see the danger. Yeah, because yeah, just like in the talking about with the Stalin era in in Russia, like I mean, the technology is a lot better now. Oh yeah. Well, I mean that's that's <laughs> the thing. I think people should get, like mm-hmm. these type of regimes like come up. Mm-hmm. And, and they they come up all over the world, but now we live in a in an era where the technology is just so crazy. Yeah, like I mean, we could find ourselves in in a really bad. I think we're heading, photoshopped into a real bad situation. Exactly. Hey, mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah, absolutely. So and and I, you know, like just ask yourself if you think that the 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 if anybody in the U.S. government would be willing to fake evidence. No. To further their career. To further their career. Actually, that's a good way of looking at it. I mean, because that's yeah. that's that's what it comes down to. Yeah. You know. Um, this wanna, last... Want to yeah. do the last one? Yeah. <laughs> this, this just... It's kind of tragic, but it just illustrates so many things. Um, so over 4th of July weekend, uh, a um, LA uh, PD squad... I don't know, or I guess they're a bomb squad... Um, Anyway, uh, they were um, confiscating illegal fireworks in the city. And there was a report of uh, some commercial grade fireworks in, um, in a neighborhood, in a residential neighborhood. And they went and they seized boxes stacked eight to 10 feet high <laughs> of um, commercial grade fireworks. And they placed them in a um, vehicle in a in a explosion like uh, containment containment vehicle. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, is what they call it. Something like that's what they called it on the report. Yeah, yeah <laughs> to dispose of the fireworks. Um, and they blew it up. And it the did con- not contain <laughs> the, the, the containment explosion. vehicle did not function properly. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and it exploded and in this residential neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and flipped cars and blew out windows for blocks around and resulted in 17 injuries. Oh, the video is gnarly, man. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty awesome. Like, I, yeah. I have to admit. And the whole thing's kind of funny in a way, but it immediately made me think of that story that I tell all the time about the school bus sliding into the, the pole. Oh, yeah. And then the, uh, the county ambulance shows up and slides into the school bus. And then the two cop cars arrive and slide into the ambulance. And, um, you know, so the, yeah. the, the government, uh, a problem that government created in the first place. And the answer is to call more government and it just creates a bigger and bigger problem. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, that's exactly this. All right. So there's so many things wrong with this. The first of them is that fireworks are illegal. Yeah. yeah. All right. So there's no reason. There's no, I mean, I guess there are reasons like they can be dangerous. And that's actually the spin that the LAPD put on this, which I thought was really funny. Like, well, now you see how dangerous these things are. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Now that you mishandled them. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so, but you you have the situation where they go in, they confiscate these fireworks. You would think that they might take them out of the residential neighborhood before they decided to blow them up. Well, because the first reports I got was they thought that they had like accidentally detonated them. Like that yeah. this was a, like a mishap because like I heard about it. Like I mean, within, it was a mishap. It was a mishap. I heard about it hours after it happened and they didn't, nobody really knew what had happened. Yeah. Like it just all of these, they knew that they had been around, that people had been in the neighborhood confiscating mm-hmm. um, fireworks mm-hmm. and they just thought that something happened and they got detonated. Yeah. As it turns out. <laughs> yeah. The chief of police says that all protocols were followed. Yeah. And that, and that they designated them intentionally. Like that. In idea, a residential neighborhood. Yeah. That was the idea. Like the idea was, was this vehicle could contain mm-hmm. that, this amount of explosives and then yeah. it didn't. <laughs> yeah. If you pay attention in the video, they have it roped off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, I mean, are you kidding me, man? Yeah. Like, so they, common sense tells you go drive that thing to a field somewhere. Exactly. Like, or just in case. Just in or, case. Well, yeah. just in case. Yeah. Like, I mean, because even if the vehicle is designed to withstand that type of impact, mm-hmm. like, things happen. Like, it, there's, you don't know. I mean, there may have been, like, and I'm sure probably what happened is there was something wrong with the vehicle. Yeah, like some it. kind of seam issue or yeah. whatever. Who knows? Um, or had been sitting in, in a field for so long that <laughs> something rusted out. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the, the LAPD in an attempt to keep people from using, um, illegal, illegal objects, illegal substances that shouldn't be illegal in the first place yeah. did far more damage than would have been done by those people using them out in the street. Absolutely. Individually. Far more damage. Without, 17 without question. Yeah. <laughs> and so the whole thing could have been avoided by just one step. Yeah. By not like, having illegal fire, yeah. fi- fireworks be illegal. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All of this could have been avoided. Yep. But instead, the, the, the fireworks, which shouldn't be illegal, are illegal. You have people, the police breaking down doors and taking them out of people's houses in this neighborhood. There's more to that actually too, yeah. which I found totally absurd. But um, then the police detonating the fireworks in that same <laughs> residential neighborhood yeah. um, and blowing out windows for blocks around and causing 17 injuries. Yeah. Now, the the other kicker to this is that the person who had these uh, boxes of commercial grade fireworks stacked eight to ten. By the way, that, this person wouldn't have bought them out of state and brought them in to sell them if they could sell them legally in the state. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's another point to be made there. Yeah. Um, but this person was uh, arrested for having these substances, obviously, uh, for what did they call it? Dangerous something. I don't yeah. remember. Anyway. Um, and But also for child endangerment because the guy's uh, 10-year-old little brother lived with them. Yeah. <laughs> now, so here's my question about that. Yeah. Um, are the police being uh, held liable for childhood endangerment for detonating these things in a residential neighborhood? You know they're not. 
I mean, you know they're not. Yeah. <laughs> well, and just as kind of a side note to that, because that, that really blew me. Like, so I spent my childhood like running around fireworks stands. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, yeah. my dad did fireworks like as a kid growing up. So like, I mean, he had a warehouse full of fireworks that I played in. Like, yeah. I mean, that was just, so that, yeah. that's just absurd to think. I mean, my dad knew what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like when I say I played in there, I wasn't playing with matches. Like, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm betting this 20 whatever year old guy that brought these things in from out of state. I bet he knew what he was doing too. <laughs> yeah. I bet he knew better than the deck nail them inside of a truck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he did. In a, regi- a, in a regi- residential area. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Anyway, they're holding this guy responsible for for the possibility of doing damage while probably the LAPD isn't being held responsible for actually doing damage. And no, because I mean, injuries. he said, he said straight up that all protocols were followed, yeah. which means they're not taking any action. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's, that's just the facts, You're right. you know? So, oh, well. so, uh, there you go. Uh, another problem, um, caused by government and, um, created Ex- bigger by the government. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Embiggened by government. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's go ahead and wrap it up there unless you got something more to add. No, I think I think we pretty well covered it. Okay. Um, well, uh hopefully this time we actually will be back in a week. You know that's always a, a that questionable could... <laughs> proposition because things happen, but um we do our best. And yeah. we've been mostly pretty good about it recently. Yeah. Um and uh, so the idea is that we'll be back here in a week. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we hope that you will um, like us on Facebook, uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, um, like and share, um, particularly share. Um, yeah. You know, if you enjoyed this or any of our podcasts, please send them out to other people that you think might also enjoy them or Absolutely. even to people that you don't think will enjoy them. They might <laughs> listen to them and enjoy them anyway. You never know. <laughs> Yep. Um, or they might, you know, there's, it might be a hate listen for them. Yeah. It could be like ancient <laughs> aliens is for me. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, go ahead and get it out there. We, we need circulation. We want circulation. Absolutely. Um, I, I want people emailing me, Michael at the Liberty Mike to tell me ha- what an idiot I am. Yep. Um, so I can tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, uh, do all those things, help us out. Let's keep getting this message out there. Um, Absolutely. And uh, we'll be back in a week when we finally get this thing right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.